Hello lovely people of YouTube, how are we all doing? My name's Danny, this is Crafty D Sculpting, and in this week's video we're crafting Paul the Alien. If you haven't seen the film, really good film, go and give it a watch. But yeah, anyway, we're giving this one away. So if you want to stand a chance of winning this one, you have to like and subscribe and write down in the comments. Any of my previous subscribers, which I'd love to thank because I've had an influx of subscribers in the last few days, so thank you very much. Just come back onto this video, hit like, and also write down in the comments. And as soon as we hit 500 subs, I'll be giving it away to one of you lucky people. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. And we're back. And as usual, we're going to be starting off with the armature. I'm getting my trusty old wire out and the wire cutters, cutting everything down to size, as you can see. And we're going to try something a little bit different with this one. I've not tried doing an armature this way, but we're going to get this extra long length of armature wire bend it around and then we're going to secure the arms in place with some floral wire as usual. Well once that's done we're going to get this floral wire and we're going to wrap the armature in it as you can see we've done there just to give a bit of extra stability before we get the cosplay out and start wrapping it up. Alright here we go getting it all conditioned. I'm going to start with the legs just getting a basic shape going on the actual legs itself. We don't have to worry too much at the moment. The majority of the legs are going to get covered later. And now starting to bulk out the body. We don't have to use any aluminium foil with this one because he's not exactly that fat. Once we've done that done, he's been cooked and we can start on the shorts. Just getting these around. Took me a few attempts to get this right, but we got there in the end. Just smoothing everything in before we get where the zipper's going to be. Once we've done that, we can get this needle tool and we can start marking out where the creases are going to be in these shorts. Now we do two different variations. We do the needle and we also use the back of a brush just to give some thicker creases in certain parts of the shorts. Right now we can start working on the body again. Now we're just going to fatten him up. He's got a bit of a pot belly on him this one. So we're adding clay as we need. Just smoothing bits and pieces into the actual shorts. Before working on his actual pot belly. Getting that in there. Get it all smoothed in. And we'll refine it later off the camera. Now I'll treat myself to some new silicone tools. What do you think guys? So we're going to use the bigger one out of all of these ones that we've got. And we're just going to start shaping everything as we need. Once we've done that we can start working on the arms. Just adding bits and pieces on where we need, getting everything to the right proportions. As you can see there, adding a little bit more in just to build up the shoulders. Before starting on the neck. Just getting a little lump of clay in there, just smoothing it all into the body. And we'll come back to that later. Getting the other arm on. Again, not being too overly fussy at the moment. Just getting everything smoothed in before we can start on with the head. Now, the head took me about three or four attempts. I started off with a big, big ball of aluminium foil in the middle and then come away from that idea in the end. So we've just got the general shape figured out there. Before working in the eyes. Now all I've done is just use a ball stylus to open it up and then using one of my other new silicon tools just to open it up a little bit more just to get that general shape before pre-baking the actual eyeballs. As you can see they're pre-baked and we can just pop them into place like that before working on these eyelids. Go one done, getting the second one done, and once we've done that, we can get it all smushed in. Getting my trusty spoon tool out, we get all that smushed in. We do add a little bit more to the head later on to get the general shape. Now we're going to start working on his mouth, and we're just going to use this silicon tool just to get the indentation of where his mouth's going to be. And then we can open it up a little bit more. There we go, just pushing it in further. We've tidied that up and now we're going to add a lip on. 
cut off any excess and then start machining the bottom of it. Get that all worked in before get your big head out of the way then before cutting in a nose. There's his nose. Right now working on his feet I've used this little bit of clay first of all just to put down because as you can see he's got sandals on. So now we're just going to open everything up like this and carve it out a little bit more and then squish it around with our fingers before coming back to our trusty spoon tool and just start refining the shape. Right, now we're getting that shape as we like we can start adding a bit of detail in a moment. There we go just getting some detail in just scoring where the um, where the actual toes would bend before turning it around getting in around the top of the knuckle areas and then working in some toenails. Oh, I'm going to chop out the back just to open it up a little bit to squish around his leg. We're going to get that around and we can start working it all in, adding bits and pieces where we need and this is where the magic happens. We get the spoon tool back out again and we start smushing that all into his leg and refining that shape of his foot. Well, once we've got this done we can start working on his sandal. So now we're just going to continue just squishing all that up and there we go start working on that sandal now just going to cut off all the excess if we're coming back to my favorite tool and there we go start refining the shape of the sandal working all the way around getting that lovely rounded shape And now we can start just pushing in the bottom of it just to uh, work the sole. If we're working the strap, we're just going to cut a little bit of this clay off. I'm going to smush down the ends and just give it a little bit of a, a finger job, shall we say, <laughs> before putting it into place. Using my trusty silicon tools. Again, just smushing the end down. And then just working that in. Right now that's done we can move on to the hands. Very similar technique for this one. He's only got three fingers and a thumb but yep I'm more than willing to do a dedicated video so if you do want to see a dedicated video of how I do hands and feet please leave a comment below guys. But yeah just working the fingers exactly the same way as I did with the toes and doing the same with the detail. Now I haven't shown everything of the hands on this one otherwise the video will be far too long but once we've got the hand in place we do add knuckles and a bit more detail. There we go getting that into place and we're just going to smush that into the body just like we did with the uh, feet earlier onto the legs. Right now onto the base. Now I've pre-baked this disc of clay and we're going to build up from there. We're going to make like a bit of a UFO, UFO base. So we've just got this bit of armature wire just to give it a bit of extra strength before moving on to showing how I do the discs by using a compass. We're just going to gently score around with the compass. Do that a couple of times, make a nice little indentation and then we're going to use a knife and just cut around it. We do this several times because we have to work the top as well as the bottom and I end up making about a dozen of these discs. Not that I use all of them. <laughs> so there we go, now we've done that we're just going to use a little bit of liquid clay, squish that all in, put the armature wire back on, then we can put that over the top and then get all that worked in. And that's just going to be the bottom side of it, that's just going to be the base. A little bit of extra structural scaffolding shall we say on, on the inside of it. Now we're going to use this ball stylus and we're just going to push these indentations all the way around to sort of give the effect of lights. So there we go working our way around it's looking more like a pie making me feel hungry. 
So anyway, we've pre-baked that now, and now we're just going to work on the top, doing exactly the same process that we've done on the underside, but using more discs. So now, as you can see, we've done it like that, and we're going to smush everything in. Once you've got that done, we can mark out where our character's going to go, and then we can start working more lights in. So we've done four different rows of these lights using different size board styluses to get different size lights. There we go. I didn't show the last set, but yep, I did put an extra set in down the bottom. We can get him back in place, make sure it looks right before moving on to paint. Now we're going to start with a base. And as I said, I am giving this one away. So as you can see there, it's signed and dated. We're going to do black first of all and then we're going to work some plate metal now I did go over the plate metal first of all as you can see in a moment and it was a little bit too bright I didn't like that so once I had gone through the paints again I found gunmetal grey and went over and as you can see it looks a lot better now we're going to go over a black wash just going to paint over the whole sculpture on this before dabbing it all off with a paper towel. And there we go, dabbing it all off. Gives a nice little stippled effect. More weathered look. There we go, looking good. Right, now we're going to move on to the lights. Now we're using demonic yellow for the first lot of lights. Now all I've done is used the ball stylus, dipped it in the paint just trying to gauge how much paint I needed on there and all we're going to do is press in now re-dip in the paint and carry on every time you put it in there re-dip in the paint otherwise you won't have enough paint for the next one now we're going to use onto fire orange and we're going to do the next lot of lights and we've done the bottom set in fire orange and demonic yellow in the top set of lights as well looking good Right, now moving on to Paul himself, and we're going to start off with this pure red for his sandals. And we're going to start with some night blue for his trousers, or his shorts. Had to do a couple of coats with this, as you can see it was very um, patchy on the first coat. But once we've done that, we're going to move on to ultramarine blue for some dry brushing. So with dry brushing, if you've not done it before, you want to work off as much of the paint as you can. And then gently just dab over the top and you'll bring up all the highlights. Looking good. Right, now we've done that, we're just going to blackwash everything and then dab it all off again. Do the trousers as well. Right now for the skin I've used a mix of these three colours and this is what we get. So now we're going to paint his whole body in this and after we've painted his body we add a little tiny bit of um, white to it to bring up the highlights and we just dry brush him again. Right now that's finished we can move on to his eyes. Now we're going to be using UV resin. We're just going to pour that in there and then hit it with the light. Now you can see it's all set and looking good. Right just to finish off we're going to get a bit of glue, put it down on the base as you can see I've nearly run out of this and my dog's running about in the background, sorry about the noise. Squish him into place and this one's finished. Don't forget guys, like and subscribe and hit that like for sure and don't forget to comment that you've done it to be in a chance for winning this one. See you in the next one guys, thanks for watching.